Recently, there's been this video going around on the net called USA Inc. Depopulation and You with uh, Deborah Tavares. And uh, I think she has this site, StopTheCrime.net, or she refers to it anyway. And she talks about in this video a document called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Um, I came over here to read this document and found it quite quite interesting so I'm gonna go through the whole document here in this video uh, the original video I'll put links to the US Inc. Inc. depopulation and I want to thank Ashley Law for referring that video to me it's uh, very disturbing and this document is very disturbing as well so I will include links to this and to the actual video and it's a uh, it takes a little while to get through. It's 44 pages long, but there's also a lot of technical pages in here that I'm just going to scroll past. And if you care to read them, help yourself. Pause the video to read those technical parts of it. But uh, thank you very much for listening, and hopefully you can get all the way through it. Forward. This manuscript was delivered to our offices by an unknown person. We did not steal the document, nor are we involved with any theft from the United States government. And we did not get the document by way of any dishonest methods. We feel that we are not endangering the national security by reproducing this document. Quite the contrary, it has been authenticated, and we feel that we are not only within our rights to publish it, but morally bound to do so. Regarding the training manual, you may have detected that we had to block out the marginal notes by the selectee at the CIA training center, but I can assure you that the manual is authentic and was printed for the purpose of introducing the selectee to the conspiracy. It has been authenticated by four different technical writers for military intelligence. One just recently retired who wants very much to have this manual distributed throughout the world, and one who is still employed as an electronics engineer by the federal government and has access to the entire series of training manuals. One was was stationed in Hawaii and held the highest security clearance in the naval intelligence, and another who is now teaching at a university and has been working with the Central Intelligence Agency for a number of years and wants out before the axe falls on the conspirators. We believe that the entire world should know about this plan, so we distributed internationally 100 of these manuscripts to ask individuals at top-level positions their opinions. The consensus opinion was to distribute this to as many people as who wanted it and to the end that they would not only understand that war had been declared against them, but would be able to properly identify the true enemy to humanity. Conspiracy theories are nothing new to history. Plots to kill Caesar and overthrow Rome abounded, for instance. However, it is seldom that concrete clues to such plots come to light and are generally known. Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, an introduction programming manual, was uncovered quite by accident on July 7, 1986, when an employee of a Boeing aircraft company purchased a surplus IBM copier for scrap parts at a sale and discovered inside details of a plan hatched in the embryonic days of the Cold War, which called for control of the masses through manipulation of industry, peoples, pastimes, education, and political leanings. It called for a quiet revolution, putting brother against brother and diverting the public's attention from what is really going on. The document you are about to read is real. It is reprinted in its virgin form with diagrams as a touch of reality. Top Secret Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars Operations Research Technical Manual TM-SW7905.1 Welcome aboard. This publication marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War called the Quiet War, being conducted using subjective biological warfare fought with silent weapons. This book contains an introductory description of this war, its strategies, and its weaponry. May 1979, number 74-1120. Security. It is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of a society, i.e. the engineering of a social automation systems, silence weapons, on a national or worldwide scale without implying extensive objectives of social control and destruction of human life, i.e. slavery and genocide. This manual is in itself an analog declaration of intent. Such a writing must be secured from public scrutiny, otherwise it might be recognized as a technically formal declaration of domestic war. 
Furthermore, when any person or group of persons in a position of great power and without full knowledge and consent of the public uses such knowledge and methodologies for economic conquest, it must be understood that a state of domestic warfare exists between said person or group of persons and the public. The solution of today's problems requires an approach which is ruthlessly candid, with no agonizing over religious, moral, or cultural values. You have qualified for this project because of your ability to look at human society with cold objectivity, and yet analyze and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual capacity without the loss of discretion or humility. Such virtues are exercised in your own best interest. Do not deviate from them. Historical Introduction Silent weapon technology has evolved from operational research, a strategic and tactical methodology developed under the military management in England during World War II. The original purpose of operations research was to, to study the strategic and tactical problems of air and land defense with the objective of effective use of limited military resources against foreign enemies, i.e. logistics. It was soon recognized by those in positions of power that the same methods might be useful for totally controlling a society but better tools were necessary. Social engineering, the analysis and automation of a society, requires the correlation of great amounts of constantly changing economic information, or data, so a high-speed computerized data processing system was necessary, which could race ahead of the society and predict when society would arrive for capitulation. Relay computers were too slow, but the electronic computer invented in 1946 by J. Presper Eckert and John W. Malky filled the bill. The next breakthrough was the development of the simplex method of linear programming in 1947 by the mathematician George B. Danzig. Then in 1948, the transistor, invented by J. Bardeen, W. H. Brayton, and W. Shockley, promised great expansion of the computer field by reducing space and power requirements. With these three inventions under their direction, those in positions of power strongly suspected that it was possible for them to control the whole world with the push of a button. Immediately, the Rockefeller Foundation got in on the ground floor by making a four-year grant to Harvard College, funding the Harvard Economic Research Project for the study of the structure of the American economy. One year later, in 1949, the United States Air Force joined in. In 1952, the grant period terminated, and a high-level meeting of the elite was held to determine the next phase of social operations research. The Harvard project had been very fruitful, as is borne out by the publication of some of its results in 1953, suggesting the feasibility of economic social engineering. Studies in the Structure of the American Economy, copyright 1953 by Wazali Leontief, International Science Press, Inc., White Plains, New York. Engineered in the last half of the decade of the 1940s, the new quiet war machine stood, so to speak, in sparkling gold-plated hardware on the showroom floor by 1954. With the creation of the Maser in 1954, the promise of unlocking unlimited sources of fusion atomic energy from the heavy hydrogen and seawater and the consequent availability of unlimited social power was a possibility only decades away. The combination was irresistible. The Quiet War was quietly declared by the international elite at a meeting held in 1954. Although the silent weapon system was nearly exposed 13 years later, the evolution of the new weapon system has never suffered any major setbacks. This volume marks the 25th anniversary of the beginning of the Quiet War. Already this domestic war has had as many victories on many fronts throughout the world. Political Introduction in 1954, it was well, re well recognized by those in positions of authority that it was only a matter of time, only a few decades before the general public would be able to grasp and upset the cradle of power. For the very elements on the new silent weapon technology were as accessible for a public utopia as they were for providing a private utopia. The issue of primary concern, that of dominance, revolved around the subject of energy sciences. Energy. Energy is recognized as the key to all activity on Earth. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy, and social science, theoretically expressed as economics, is the study of the sources and control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems, mathematics. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science, and the bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. 
All science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge, the end is control. Beyond this remains only one issue, who will be the beneficiary? In 1954, this was the issue of primary concern. Although the so-called moral issues were raised in view of the law of natural selection, it was agreed that a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Consequently, in the interest of future world order, peace, and tranquility, it was decided to privately wage a quiet war against the American public with an ultimate objective of permanently shifting the natural and social energy wealth of the undisciplined and irresponsible many into the hands of the self-disciplined, responsible, and worthy few. In order to implement this objective, it was necessary to create, secure, and apply new weapons which, as it turned out, were a class of weapons so subtle and sophisticated in their principle of operation and public appearance as to earn for themselves the name silent weapons. In conclusion, the objective of economic research as conducted by the magnates of capital, banking, and the industries of commodities or goods and services is the establishment of an economy which is totally predictable and manipulatable. In order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low class elements of society must be brought under total control. Example, they must be housebroken, trained, and assigned a yoke, a long-term social duty from a very early age, before they have an opportunity to question the proprietary of the matter. In order to achieve such conformity, the lower class family unit must be disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents and the establishment of government-operated daycare centers for the occupationally orphaned children. The quality of education given to the lower class must be of the poorest sort so that the mode of ignorance isolating the inferior class from the superior class is and remains incomprehensible to the inferior class. With such an initial handicap, even bright lower class individuals have little, if any, hope of extricating themselves from their assigned lot in this life. This form of slavery is essential to maintain some measure of social order, peace, and tranquility for the ruling upper class. Descriptive Introduction of the Silent Weapon Everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators, but only in its own manner of functioning. It shoots situations instead of bullets, propelled by data processing instead of chemical reaction or explosion, originating from bits of data instead of grains of gunpowder from a computer instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer instead of a marksman, under the orders of a banking magnate instead of a military general. It makes no obvious explosive noises, causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and does not obviously interfere with anyone's daily social life, yet it makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with the daily social life, example, unmistakable to a trained observer, that is, one who knows what to look for. The public cannot comprehend this weapon and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but that is because of the technical nature of the silent weapon. They cannot express their feelings in a rational way or handle the problem with intelligence. Therefore, they don't know how to cry for help and don't know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts or adapts to its presence and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, psychologically via economic, becomes too great and they crack up. Therefore the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. Theoretical Introduction Give me control over a nation's currency and I care not who makes its laws. Mayor Amschel Rothschild, 1743-1812 to Today's silent weapons technology is an outgrowth of a simple idea discovered, succinctly expressed, and effectively applied by the quoted Mr. Mayor Amschel Rothschild. Mr. Rothschild discovered the missing passive component of economic theory known as economic inductance. 
He, of course, did not think of his discovery in these 20th century terms, and to be sure, mathematical analysis had to wait for the second industrial revolution. The rise of the theory of mechanics and electronics, and finally the invention of the electronic computer before it could be effectively applied in the control of world economy. General energy concepts. In the study of energy systems, there always appears three elementary concepts. These are potential energy, kinetic energy, and energy dissipation. And corresponding to these concepts, there are three idealized, essentially pure physical counterparts called passive components. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of potential energy is associated with a physical property called elasticity or stiffness and can be represented by a stretched spring. In electronic science, potential energy is stored in a capacitor instead of a spring. This property is called capacitance instead of elasticity or stiffness. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of kinetic energy is associated with a physical property called inertia or mass and can be represented by a mass or flywheel in motion. In electronic science, kinetic energy is stored in an inductor, in a magnetic field, instead of a mass. This property is called inductance instead of inertia. In the science of physical mechanics, the phenomenon of energy dissipation is associated with a physical property called friction or resistance and can be represented by a dash pot or other device which converts energy into heat. In electronic science, dissipation of energy is performed by an element called either a resistor or a conductor, the term resistor being the one generally used to describe a more ideal device, example wire, employed to convey electronic energy efficiently from one location to another. The property of a resistance or conductor is measured as either resistance or conductance reciprocals. In economics, these three energy concepts are associated with Economic capacitance would equal capital, money, stock, inventory, investments in buildings and durables. Economic conductance would be goods, production flow coefficients. Economic inductance would be services, the influence of the population of industry on output. All of the mathematical theory developed in the study of one energy system, mechanics, electronics, can be immediately applied in the study of other energy systems. Mr. Rothschild's Energy Discovery What Mr. Rothschild had discovered was the basic principle of power, influence, and control over people as applied to economics. That principle is, when you assume the appearance of power, people soon give it to you. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency or deposit loan accounts had the required appearance of power that could be used to induce people, inductance with people corresponding to a magnetic field. Into, surround, into surrendering their real wealth in exchange for a promise of greater wealth instead of real compensation. They would put up real collateral in exchange for a loan of promissory notes. Mr. Rothschild found that he could issue more notes than he had backing for, so long as he had someone's stock of gold as a persuader to show his customers. Mr. Rothschild loaned his promissory notes to individual and governments. These would create overconfidence. Then he would make money scarce, tighten control of the system, and collect the collateral, collateral through the obligation of contracts. The cycle was then repeated. These pressures could be used to ignite a war. Then he would control the availability of currency to determine who would win the war. That government which agreed to give him control of its economic system got his support. Collection of debts was guaranteed by economic aid to the enemy of the debtor. The profit derived from this economic methodology made Mr. Rothschild all the more able to expand his wealth. He found that the public greed would allow currency to be, pre pre to be printed by a government order beyond the limits of inflation of backing in precious metal or the production of goods and services. Apparent capital as paper inductor. In this structure, credit presented as a pure element called currency has the appearance of capital but is in effect negative capital. Hence, it has the appearance of service, but is in fact indebtedness or debt. It is therefore an economic inductance instead of an economic capacitance. And if balanced in no other way, will be balanced by the negation of population, war or genocide. The total goods and services represent real capital called the gross national product, and currency may be pr printed up to this level and still represent economic capacitance. But currency printed beyond this level is subtractive, represents the introduction of economic inductance, and constitutes notes of indebtedness. 
War is therefore the balancing of the system by killing the true creditors, the public, which we have taught to exchange true value for inflated currency, and falling back on whatever is left of the resources of nature and regeneration of those resources. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency gave him the power to rearrange the economic structure to his own advantage, to shift economic inductance to those economic positions which would encourage the greatest economic instability and oscillation. The final key to economic control had to wait until there was sufficient data and high-speed computing equipment to keep close watch on the economic oscillations created by the price shocking and excess paper energy credits, paper inductance, and inflation. Breakthrough. The aviation field provided the greatest evolution in economic engineering by way of mathematical theory of shock testing. In this process, a projectile is fired from an airframe on the ground and the impulse of the recoil is monitored by vibration transducers connected to the airframe and wired to chart recorders. By studying the echoes or reflections of the recoil impulse in the airframe, it is possible to discover critical vibrations in the structure of the airframe, which either vibrations of the engine or aeolium vibrations of the wings or a combination of the two might reinforce resulting in a resonant self-destruction of the airframe in flight as an aircraft. From the standpoint of engineering, this means that the strengths and weaknesses of the structure of the airframe in terms of vibrational energy can be discovered and manipulated. Applications in economics. To use this method or airframe shock testing in economic engineering, the prices of commodities are shocked and the public consumer reaction is monitored. The resulting echoes of the economic shock are interpreted theoretically by computers and the psychoeconomic structure of the economy is thus discovered. It is by this process that partial differential and difference matrices are discovered that define the family household and make possible its evaluation as an economic industry, dissipative consumer structure. Then the response of the household to future shocks can be predicted and manipulated, manipulated and society becomes a well-regulated animal with its reins under the control of a sophisticated computer-regulated social engineering bookkeeping system. Eventually, every individual element of the structure comes under computer control through a knowledge of personal preferences, such knowledge guaranteed by computer association of consumer preferences, UPC codes, zebra stripe pricing codes on packages uh, with identified consumers, identified via association with the use of a credit card and later a permanent tattooed body number invisible under the normal ambient illumination. Summary. Economics is only a social extension of a natural energy system. It also has its three passive components. Because of the distribution of wealth and the lack of communication and lack of data, this field has been the last energy field for which a knowledge of these three passive components has been developed. Since energy is the key to all activity on the face of the earth, it follows that in order to attain a monopoly of energy, raw materials, goods, and services, and to establish a world system of slave labor, it is necessary to have a first strike capability in the field of economics. In order to maintain our position, it is necessary that we have absolute first knowledge of the science of control over all economic factors and the first experience in engineering the world economy. In order to achieve such sovereignty, we must at least achieve this one end, that the public will not make either the logical or mathematical connection between economics and the other energy sciences or learn to apply such knowledge. This is becoming increasingly difficult to control because more and more businesses are making demands upon their computer programmers to create and apply mathematical models for the management of those businesses. It is only a matter of time before the new breed of private programmer economists, economists will catch on to the far-reaching implications of the work begun at Harvard in 1948. The speed which they can communicate their warning to the public will largely depend upon how effective we have been at controlling the media, subverting education, and keeping the public distracted with matters of no real importance. The economic model. Economics as a social energy science has as a first objective, the description of the complex way in which any given unit of resource is used to satisfy some economic want. 
Lee and a TIFF matrix. The first objective, when it is extended to get the most product from the least or limited resources, comprises that objective of general military and industrial logistics known as operations research. See Simplex method of linear programming. The Harvard Economic Research Project from 1948 was an extension of World War II operations research. Its purpose was to discover the science of controlling an economy, at first the American economy and then the world economy. It was felt that with sufficient mathematical foundation and data, it would be nearly as easy to predict and control the trend of an economy as to predict and control the trajectory of a pro projectile. Such has proven to be the case. Moreover, the economy has been transformed into a guided missile on target. The immediate aim of the Harvard project was to discover the economic structure, what forces change that structure, how the behavior of that structure can be predicted, and how it can be manipulated. What was needed was a well-organized knowledge of the mathematical structures and interrelationships of investment, production, distribution, and consumption. To make a short story of it all, it was discovered that an economy obeyed the same laws as electricity and that all of the mathematical theory and practical and computer know-how developed for the electronic field could be directly applied in the study of economics. This discovery was not openly declared and its more subtle implications were and are kept a close guarded secret. For example, that in an economic model, human life is measured in dollars, and that the electric spark generated when opening a switch connected to an active inductor is mathematically analogous to the initiation of war. The greatest hurdle which theoretical economists faced was the accurate description of the household as an industry. This is a challenge because consumer purchases are a matter of choice which in turn is influenced by income, price, and other economic factors. This hurdle was cleared in an indirect and statistically approximate way by an application of shock testing to determine the current characteristics called current technical coefficients of household industry. Finally, because problems in theoretical electronics can be translated, translated very easily into problems of theoretical electronics, and the solution translated back again, it follows that only a book of language translation and concept definition needed to be written for economics. The remainder could be gotten from standard works on mathematics and electronics. This makes the publication of books on advanced economics unnecessary and greatly simp simplifies project security. This section of the document presents many industrial diagrams, so I'm just going to scroll through these and uh, you can pause the video if there's anything that you care to read in this section. The social welfare, welfare program is nothing more than an open-ended credit balance system which creates a false capital industry to give non-productive people a roof over their heads and food in their stomachs. This can be useful, however, because the recipients become state property in return for the gift, a standing army for the elite, for he who pays the piper picks the tune. 
Those who get hooked on the economic drug must go to the elite for a fix. And this method of introducing large amounts of stabilizing capacitance is by borrowing on the future credit of the world. This is a fourth law of motion on set and consists of performing an action and leaving the system before the reflected reaction returns to the point of action, a delayed reaction. This means the means of surviving the reaction is by changing the system before the reaction can return. By this means, politicians become more popular in their own time and the public pays later. In fact, the measure of such a politician is the delay time. The same thing is achieved by a government by printing money beyond the limit of the gross national product and the economic process called inflation. This puts a large quantity of money into the hand of the public and maintains a balance against their greed, creates a false self-confidence in them and for a while stays the wolf from the door. They must eventually result, resort to war to balance the account because war ultimately is merely the act of destroying the creditor and the politicians are the publicly hired hitmen that justify the act to keep the responsibility and blood off the public conscience. See section on consent factors and social economic structuring. If the people really cared about their fellow man, they would control their appetites, greed, procreation, etc., so that they would not have to operate on a credit or welfare social system which steals from the worker to satisfy the bum. Since most of the general public will not exercise restraint, there are only two alternatives to reduce the economic inductance of the system. Let the populace bludgeon each other to death in war, which will only result in a total destruction of the living earth. Take control of the world by the use of economic silent weapons in a form of quiet warfare and reduce the economic inductance of the world to a safe level by a process of benevolent slavery and genocide. The later option has been taken as the obviously better option. At this point, it should be crystal clear to the reader why absolute secrecy about these silent weapons is necessary. The general public refuses to improve its own mentality and its faith in its fellow man. It has become a herd of proliferating barbarians and, so to speak, a blight upon the face of the earth. They do not care enough about economic science to learn why they have not been able to avoid war despite religious morality and their religious or self-gratifying refusal to deal with earthly problems renders the solution of the earthly problem unreachable to them. It is left to those few who are true, truly willing to think and survive as the fittest to survive, to solve the problem for themselves as the few who really care. Otherwise, exposure of the silent weapon would destroy our only hope of preserving the seed of the future true humanity. Now the following is a bunch more technical information. If you're curious, uh, just pause the video. I'm going to scroll through it fairly quickly. One method of evaluating the technical coefficients of the household industry depends upon shocking the prices of a commodity and noting the changes in the sales of all of the commodities. Economic shock testing. In recent times, the application of operations research to the study of public economy has been obvious for anyone who understands the principles of shock testing. In shock testing of an aircraft airframe, the recoil impulse of firing a gun mounted on that aircraft airframe causes shock waves in that structure, which tell aviation engineers the conditions under which some parts of the airplane or the whole airplane or its wings will start to vibrate or flutter like a guitar string, a flute reed, or a tuning fork and disintegrate or fall apart in flight. 
Economic engineers achieve the same result in studying the behavior of the economy and the consumer publicly by carefully selecting a staple commodity such as beef, coffee, gasoline, or sugar, and then causing a sudden change or shock in its price or availability, thus kicking everybody's budget and buying habits out of shape. They then observe the shock waves which result by monitoring the changes in advertising prices and sales of that and other commodities. The objective of such studies is to acquire the know-how to set the public economy into a predictable state of motion or change, even a controlled self-destructive state of motion which will convince the public that certain expert people should take control of the money system and reestablish security rather than liberty and justice for all. When the subject citizens are rendered unable to control their financial affairs, they of course become totally enslaved and a source of cheap labor. Not only the prices of commodities, but also the availability of labor can be used as the means of shock testing. Labor strikes deliver excellent tests. Shock to an economy, especially in the critical service areas of trucking and transportation, communication, public utilities, energy, water, garbage collection, etc. By shock testing, testing, it is found that there is a direct relationship between the availability of money flowing in an economy and the real psychological outlook and response of masses of people dependent upon that availability. For example, there is a measurable quantitative relationship between the price of gasoline and the probability that a person would experience a headache, feel a need to watch a violent movie, smoke a cigarette, or go to a tavern for a mug of beer. It is important. It is most interesting that by observing and measuring the economic models by which the public tries to run from their problems and escape from reality and by applying the mathematical theory of operations research it is possible to program computers to predict the most probable combination of created events or shocks which will bring about a complete control and subjugation of the public through a subversion of the public economy by shaking the plum tree Okay, we're going to scroll through some more of the technical data here, and once again, pause the video if you want to read any of it. And this is the result into which we substitute to get that set of conditions of prices of commodities, bad news on TV, etc., which will deliver a collapse of public morale ripe for takeover. Once the economic price and sales coefficients are determined, they may be translated into technical supply and demand coefficients. Shock testing of a given commodity is then repeated to get the time rate of change of these technical coefficients. Introduction to Economic Amplifiers Economic amplifiers are the active components of economic engineering. The basic characteristics of any amplifier, mechanical, electrical, or economic, is that it receives an input control signal and delivers energy from an independent energy source to a specified output terminal in a predictable relationship to that input control signal. The simplest form of an economic amplifier is a device called advertising. If a person is spoken to by a TV advertiser as if he were 12 years old, then due to suggestibility he will, with a certain probability, respond or react to that suggestion with the uncritical response of a 12-year-old and will reach into his economic reservoir and deliver its energy to put that product on impulse when he passes it in the store. An economic amplifier may have several inputs and output. Its response might be instantaneous or delayed. Its circuit symbol might be a rotary switch if its options are exclusive, qualitative, go or no go, or it might have its parametric input-output relationships specified by a matrix with internal energy sources represented. Whatever its form might be, its purpose is to govern the flow of energy from a source to an output sink in direct relationship to an input control signal. For this reason, it is called an active circuit element or component. 
economic amplifiers fall into classes called strategies, and in comparison with electronic amplifiers, the specific internal functions of an economic amplifier are called logistical instead of electrical. Therefore, economic amplifiers not only deliver power gain, but also, in effect, are used to cause changes in the economic circuitry. In the design of an economic amplifier, we must have some idea of at least five functions, which are the available input signals, the desired output control objectives, the strategic objective, the available economic power sources, the logistical options, the process of defining and evaluating these factors and incorporating the economic amplifier into an economic system has been popularly called game theory. The design of an economic amplifier begins with a specification of the power level of the output, which can range from personal to national. The second condition is accuracy of response. Example, how accurately the output action is a function of the input commands. High gain combined with strong feedback helps to deliver the required precision. Most of the error will be the input data signal. Personal input data tends to be specified, while national input data tends to be statistical. A short list of inputs. Questions to be answered. What, where, why, when, how, and who. General sources of information. Telephone taps, analysis of garbage, surveillance, behavior of children in school, standard of living by, food, shelter, clothing, transportation, social contacts, telephone itemized record of calls, family, marriage certificates, birth certificates, etc., friends, associates, etc., memberships in organizations, political affiliation, the personal paper trail, personal buying habits, personal consumer preferences, checking accounts, credit card purchases, tagged credit card purchases, the credit card purchase of products bearing the UPC code, assets, checking accounts, savings accounts, real estate, business, automobile, safety deposit at the bank, stock market, liabilities, creditors, enemies, loans, government sources, welfare, social security, USDA, surplus food, doles, grants, subsidies, government sources via intimidation, internal revenue service, OSHA, census, etc., other government sources, surveillance of U.S. mail, habits, patterns, programming, strengths and weaknesses, activities, sports, hobbies, see legal fear, anger, crime record, hospital records, drug sensitivities, reaction to pain, uh, psychiatric records, fears, angers, disgust, adaptability, adaptability, reactions to stimuli, violence, suggestibility or hypnosis, pain, pleasure, love and sex, methods of coping of adaptability and behavior, consumption of alcohol, consumption of drugs, entertainment, religious factors influencing behavior, other methods, methods of escaping from reality, payments, pay on time, payment of telephone bills, energy purchases, water purchases, repayment of loans, house payments, automobile payments, payments on credit cards, the political sensitivity, beliefs, contacts, positions, strengths, weaknesses, projects, activities, legal inputs, behavior control, uh, excuses for investigation, search, arrest, or employment of force to modify behavior, court records, police records, driving record, reports made to police, insurance information, anti-establishment acquaintances, national input information, business sources via the IRS, prices of commodities, sales, investments in, stocks, inventory, production tools and machinery, buildings and improvements, the stock market, banks and credit bureaus, credit information, payment information, miscellaneous sources, polls and surveys, publications, telephone records, energy and utility purchases, and short list of outputs. Outputs create controlled situations, manipulation of the economy, hence society, control by control of compensation and income. Sequence allocates opportunities, destroys opportunities, controls the economic environment, controls the availability of raw materials, controls capital, controls bank rates, controls the inflation of the currency, controls the possession of property, controls industrial capacity, controls manufacturing, controls the availability of goods or commodities, controls the prices of commodities, controls services 
the labor force, etc., controls payments to government officials, controls the legal functions, controls the personal data files, uncorrectable by the party slandered, controls advertising, controls media contact, controls material available for TV viewing, disengages attention from real issues, engages emotions, creates disorder, chaos, and insanity, controls design and more probing tax forms, controls surveillance, controls the storage of information, develops uh, psychological analysis and profiles of individuals, controls legal functions, controls sociological factors, controls health options, preys on weakness, cripples strengths, leeches wealth and substance. A table of strategies. If you do this, you get this. Keep the public ignorant. Less public organization. Maintain access to control prices, points for feedback, required reaction to output sales. Create preoccupation, lowers defenses, attacks a family unit, young, control the, of the education, give less, less cash and more data, credit and doles, more self-indulgent and more, attack the privacy of the church, destroys faith in the sort of government. <clears throat> Social conformity, computer programming simplicity, minimize the tax program, protest, maximize economic data minimum, enforcement problems, stabilize the consent, simplicity coefficients, tighten control of variables, simpler computer input data, greater predictability, establish boundary conditions, equations, problem simplicity, solutions of differential indifference, proper timing, less data shift and blurring, maximum control, minimum resistance to control, collapse of currency, destroy the faith of the American people in each other. Diversion, the primary strategy. Experience has proven that the simplest method of securing a silent weapon and gaining control of the public is to keep the public undisciplined and ignorant of the basic system principles on the one hand while keeping them confused, disorganized, and distracted with matters of no real importance on the other hand. This is achieved by disengaging their minds, sabotaging their mental activities, providing a low quality program of public education in mathematics, logic systems, design, and economics, and discouraging technical creativity, engaging their emotions, increasing their self-indulgence and their indulgence in emotional and physical activities by unrelenting emotional affrontations and attacks, mental and emotional rape by way of constant barrage of sex, violence, and wars in the media, especially the TV and the newspaper, giving them what they desire in excess, junk food for thought and depriving them of what they really need, rewriting history and law, subjecting the public to the deviant creation, thus being able to shift their thinking from personal needs to highly fabricated outside priorities. These preclude their interest in and discovery of the silent weapons of social automation technology. The general rule is that there is a profit in confusion. The more confusion, the more profit. Therefore, the best approach is to create problems and then offer solutions. Diversion summary. Media. Keep the adult public attention diverted away from the real issues, social issues, and captivated by matters of no real importance. Schools. Keep the young public ignorant of real mathematics, real economics, real law, and real history. Entertainment. Keep the public entertainment below a sixth grade level. Work. Keep the public busy, busy, busy with no time to think. Back on the farm with the other animals. Consent, the primary victory. A silent weapon system operates upon data obtained from a docile public by legal, but not always lawful force. Much information is made available to silent weapon system programmers through the Internal Revenue Service. See studies in structure of the American economy for an IRS source list. This information consists of the enforced delivery of well-organized data contained in federal and tax state forms collected, assembled, and submitted by slave labor provided by taxpayers and employers. Furthermore, the number of such forms submitted to the IRS is a useful indicator of public consent, an important factor in strategic decision-making. Other data sources are given in the short list of inputs. Consent coefficients, numerical feedback indicating victory status, psychological basis. When the government is able to collect tax and seize private property without just compensation, it is an indication that the public is ripe for surrender and is consenting to enslavement and legal encroachment. A good and easily quantif quantified indicator of harvest time is the number of public citizens who pay income tax despite an obvious lack of reciprocal or honest service from the government amplification energy sources. 
The next step in the process of designing an economic amplifier is discovering the energy sources. The energy source which support any primitive economic system are, of course, a supply of raw materials and the consent of the people to labor, and consequently assume a certain rank, position, level, or class in the social structure to provide labor at various levels in the pecking order. Each class in guaranteeing its own level of income controls the class immediately below it, hence preserves the class structure. This provides stability and security, but also government from the top. As time goes on and communication and education improve, the lower class elements of the social labor structure become knowledgeable and envious of the good things that the upper class members have. They also begin to attain a knowledge of energy systems and the ability to enforce their rise through the class structure. This threatens the sovereignty of the elite. If this rise of the lower class can be postponed long enough, the elite can achieve energy dominance and labor by consent no longer will hold a position of an essential energy source. Until such energy dominance is absolutely established, the consent of people to labor and let others handle their affairs must be taken into consideration since failure to do so could cause the people to interfere in the final transfer of energy sources to the control of the elite. It is essential to recognize that at this time, public consent is still an essential key to the release of energy in the process of economic amplification. Therefore, the consent as energy release mechanism will now be considered. Logistics. The successful, ap successful application of a strategy requires a careful study of inputs, outputs, the strategy connecting the inputs and outputs, and the available energy sources to fuel the strategy. This study is called logistics. A logistical problem is studied at the elementary level first, and then levels of greater complexity are studied as a synthesis of elementary factors. This means that a given system is analyzed, i.e. broken down into subsystems, and these turn, in turn are analyzed until by this process one arrives at the logistical atom, the individual. This is where the process of synthesis properly begins at the time of birth of the individual. The artificial womb. From the time a person leaves its mother's womb, its every effort is direct, directed towards building, maintaining, and withdrawing into artificial wombs various sorts of substitute protective devices or shells. The objective of these artificial wombs is to provide a stable environment for both stable and unstable activity, to provide a shelter for the evolutionary process of growth and maturity, uh, example survival, to provide security for freedom and to provide defensive protection for offensive activity. This is equally true of both the general public and the elite. However, there is a, a de definite difference in the way each of these classes go about the solution of problems. The political structure of a nation dependency. The primary reason why the individual citizens of a country create a political structure is a subconscious wish or desire to perpetuate their own dependency relationship of childhood. Simply put, they want a human god to eliminate all risk from their life, pat them on the head and kiss their bruises, put a chicken on every din dinner table, clothe their bodies, tuck them into bed at night, and tell them that everything will be alright when they wake up in the morning. This public demand is incredible, so the human god, the politician, meets incredibility with incredibility by promising the world and delivering nothing. So who is the bigger liar, the public or the godfather? This public behavior is surrender born of fear, laziness, and expediency. It is the basis of the welfare state as a strategic weapon useful against a disgusting public. Action Offense most people want to be able to subdue and or kill other human beings which disturb their daily lives, but they do not want to have to cope with the moral and religious issues which such an overt act on their part might rise, might raise. Therefore they assign the dirty work to others, including their own children, so as to keep the blood off their hands. They rave, raise about rave about the humane treatment of animals and then sit down to a delicious hamburger from a whitewashed slaughterhouse down the street and out of sight. But even more hypocritical, they pay tax taxes to finance a professional association of hitmen collectively called politicians and then complain about corruption in government. Responsibility. Again, most people want to be free to do things, to explore, etc., but they're afraid to fail. The fear of failure is manifested in irresponsibility and especially in delegating those personal responsibilities to others where success is uncertain or carries possible or created liabilities, which the person is not prepared to accept. They want authority, root word author, but they will not accept responsibility or liability, so they hire politicians to face reality for them. 
Summary. The people hire the politicians so that the people can obtain security without managing it, obtain action without thinking about it, inflict theft, injury, and death upon others without having to contemplate either life or death, avoid responsibility for their own intentions, obtain the benefits of reality and science without exerting themselves in the discipline of facing or learning either of these things. They give the politicians the power to create and manage a war machine to provide for the survival of the nation or womb, prevent encroachment of anything upon the nation or womb, destroy the enemy who threatens the nation or womb, destroy those citizens of their country who do not conform for the sake of stability of the nation or womb. Politicians hold many quasi-military jobs, the lowest being the police, which are soldiers, the attorneys and CPAs next who are spies and saboteurs, licensed, and the judges who shout out orders and run the closed union military shop for whatever the market will bear. The generals are industrialists, the presidential level of commander-in-chief is shared by the international bankers. The people know that they have created this farce and financed it with their own taxes given consent, but they would rather knuckle under under than be the hypocrite. Thus a nation becomes divided into two very distinct parts, a docile subnation, a great silent majority, and a political subnation. The political subnation remains attached to the docile subnation, tolerates it, and leeches its substance until it grows strong enough to detach itself and then devour its parent. System analysis. In order to make meaningful comp computerized economic decisions about war, the primary economic flywheel, it is necessary to assign concrete logistical values to each element of the war structure, personal and material alike. This process begins with a clear and candid description of the sus subsystems of such a structure. The draft as a military service. Few efforts of human behavior modification are more remarkable or more effective than that of the socio-military institution known as the draft. A primary purpose of a draft or other such institution is to instill by intimidation in the young males of a society the uncritical conviction that the government is omnipotent. He is soon taught that a prayer is slow to reverse what a bullet can do in an instance. Thus a man trained in a religious environment for 18 years of his life can by this instrument of the government be broken down, be purged of his fantasies and delusions in a matter of mere months. Once that conviction is instilled, all else becomes easy to instill. Even more interesting is the process by which a young man's parents, who purposely love him, can be induced to send him off to war for his death. Although the scope of this work will not allow this matter to be expanded in full detail, nevertheless a course overview will be possible and can serve to reveal those factors which must be included in some numerical form in a computer analysis of social and war systems. We begin with a tentative definition of the draft. The draft, or selective service, is an institution of compulsory collective sacrifice and slavery devised by the middle-aged and elderly for the purpose of pressing the young into doing the public dirty work. It further serves to make the youth as guilty as the elders, thus making criticism of the elders by the youth less likely. General General generational stabilizer. It is marketed and sold to the public under the label of patriotic national service. Once a canic economic definition of the draft is achieved, that definition is used to outline the boundaries of a structure called a human value system, which in turn is translated into the terms of game theory. The value of such a slave labor or is given the table of a human value, a table broken down into categories by intellect, experience, post-service, job demand, etc. Some of these categories are ordinary and can be tentatively evaluated in terms of the value of certain jobs for which a known fee exists. Some jobs are harder to uh, value because they are unique to the demands of social subversion. For an extreme example, the value of a mother's instruction to her daughter, causing that daughter to put certain behavioral demands upon a future husband 10 or 15 years hence. Thus, by suppressing his resistance to a perversion of a government, making it easier for a banking cartel to buy the state of New York in, say, 20 years. Such a problem leans heavily upon the observations and data of wartime espionage and many types of psychological testing. But crude mathematical models, or logarithms, can be devised if not to predict, at least to predeterminate these events with maximum certainty. What does not exist by natural cooperation is thus enhanced by calculated compulsion. Human beings are machines, levers which may be grasped and turned and there is little real difference between the automating of a society and automating a shoe factory. These derived values were variable. 
It is necessary to use a current table of human values for computer analysis. These values are given in true measures rather than U.S. dollars since the latter is unstable, being presently inflated beyond the production of national goods and services so as to give the economy a false kinetic energy, paper inductance. The silver value is stable, it being possible to buy the same amount with a gram of silver today as it could be bought in 1920. Human value measured in silver units changes slightly due to the change in production technology. Enforcement. Factor 1. As in every social system approach, stability is achieved only by understanding and accounting for human nature, action, reaction patterns. A failure to do so can be, and it usually is, disastrous. As in other human social schemes, one form or another of intimidation or incentive is essential to the success of the draft. Physical principles of action and reaction must be applied to both internal and external subsystems. To secure the draft, individual brainwashing or programming in both, of both the family unit and the peer group must be engaged and brought under control. Factor 2. Father. The man of the household must be housebroken to ensure that Junior will grow up with the right social training and attitudes. The advertising, media, etc. are engaged to see to it that the father-to-be is pussy-whipped before or by the time he is married. He is taught that either he conforms to the social notch cut out for him or his sex life will be hobbled and his tender companionship will be zero. He is made to see that woman, women demand security more than logical, principled, or honorable behavior. By the time his son must go to war, father, with jelly for a backbone, will slam a gun into Junior's hand before father will risk the censor of his peers or make a hypocrite of himself by crossing the investment he has in his own personal opinion or self-esteem. Junior will go off to war or father will be embarrassed, so Junior will go to war, the true purpose notwithstanding. Factor 3. Mother. The female element of human society is ruled by emotion first and logic second. In the battle between logic and imagination, imagination always wins. Fantasy prevails, maternal instinct dominates so that the child comes first and the future comes second. A woman with a newborn baby is too starry-eyed to see a wealthy man's cannon fodder or a cheap source of slave labor. A woman must, however, be conditioned to accept the transition to reality when it comes or sooner. As the transition becomes more difficult to manage, the family unit must be carefully disintegrated, and state-controlled public education and state-operated child care centers must become more common and legally enforced so as to begin the detachment of the child from the mother and father at an earlier age. Inoculation of behavioral drugs, Ritalin, can speed the transition for the child. Mandatory. Caution. A woman's impulsive anger can override her fear. An irate woman's power must never be underestimated, and her power over a pussy whip husband must likewise never be underestimated. It got the woman the vote in 1920. Factor 4. Junior. The emotional pressure for self-preservation during the time of war and the self-serving attitude of the common herd that have an option to avoid the battlefield, if Junior can be persuaded to go, is all the pressure finally necessary to propel Johnny off the war. Their quiet blackmailings of him are the threats. No sacrifice, no friends, no glory, no girlfriends. Factor 5. The sister. And what about Junior's sister? She is given all the good things of life by her father and taught to expect the same from her future husband regardless of the price. Factor 6. Cattle. Those who will not use their brains are no better off than those who have no brains. And so this mindless school of jellyfish, father, mother, son, and daughter become useful beasts of burden or trainers of the same. This concludes what is available at this document. If you've made it this far, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to listen, and I would highly encourage you to visit www.stopthecrime.net. Uh, that's where this document came from, and I will include links below in the description. And uh, thank you very much again for listening. And get this out to your friends and family. Tell them about stopthecrime.net. Show them the article. You can download it from there.